Aloha. And welcome back to Hawaii, where sharing is caring and community is wonderful. And our neighbor, Ryan, gave us this fish yesterday. Oh my gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, this is called an aku, known as bonita or bonito, I think on the mainland. And it's a fish that's often snobbed because it's known to be bloody and it doesn't have the longest shelf life, but it is delicious. And so what we're gonna do today is we are going to show you how to use aku three different ways. And we're gonna eat this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So the first thing we're gonna do is gut this fish. I'm gonna just start from the little anal hole, go all the way up here, break the gills off right here. Mm. <laughs> now I'm gonna pull and the guts should all come out with the gills. So this we're gonna put in our compost bucket because we're not gonna eat this, but it's gonna turn into wonderful, beautiful soil for the plants that feed us, like the collard greens that Buddy's eating. <laughs> One, two, three, go! There you, oh my gosh, you did it! I think he doesn't like his shirt and his diaper you chose out for him. Excuse me, are you smiling now? Oh my gosh. Yes, you won. I'm gonna go to bed now. Okay, so I gave the inside a quick rinse to get rid of some of the blood. Our first aku dish is gonna be breakfast. It's going to be aku bones and eggs. Aku bones with chili pepper water. We're basically gonna just take the bones and fry them up and we're gonna eat the meat off the bones. It's a tradition here in Hawaii. It's not just like, oh, eat the scraps and don't waste. It is like, Damn, that is like a part you crave. And I'm trying not to make my cuts too close to the bone. What we want, we want a meaty breakfast. But this fish is what you find in, in canned tuna. Unless that tuna is marked albacore and it's like the whiter tuna, whenever you eat tuna fish sandwiches, you're eating skipjack tuna. All right, here's breakfast, honey. What do you think? Akubo. Does it look delicious? Yeah. Okay, good. We're gonna get to this later. For now, keep it away from flies, keep it cold. And with a cleaver, I'm just gonna chop off its tail. This is what we're looking for. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna salt and pepper it. And then usually I just use fresh cracked black pepper, but Justin's wonderful mother sent us this lemon pepper. I've really been liking it. You know me and citrus. And we're gonna do that to both sides. I thought black pepper was supposed to deter flies. I have some grapeseed oil in here because it can handle higher heat. One other seasoning I'm gonna put in is garlic. It's okay, that thing's gonna burn, but it's just gonna give really good flavor to the fish. So that looks hot enough to get going. Wow, look at that beautiful piece of meat. Smells good, huh, honey? Yeah. To me, that is perfection in my preference of an aku bone. See how it's got that nice fried, like crispy texture? Look at that, Justin. Nice. Oh my gosh. Oh, <laughs> it really does make me drool. I'm so excited. So this is done. This is beautiful. I mean, you could eat it right now, but growing up in Hawaii, you always eat aku bone with chili pepper water. Good morning, tangerine tree. Good morning, baby collard greens. And good morning to our Hawaiian chili pepper plants. I took a Hawaiian chili pepper, picked one from my dad's bush on Maui, and saved it, dried it, and then used the seeds to create this. So Hawaiian chili pepper water is another one of those things where everyone has their own style, their own favorite ingredients, and their own method of making it. I'm gonna start with garlic, that's a lot of garlic, but I like garlic and it adds a nice bite and spice to it. I'm going to add some chili peppers. How spicy, how spicy you want it, honey? Spicy. These little buggers have some kick. I think most people would stop at one. We're going four deep. And now I'm just going to press and smash them. And if you don't have Hawaiian chili peppers, then use your favorite spicy pepper. So now that it's like roughly smashed, I'm going to add Hawaiian salt because we want it salty, but also the salt really helps me grind it down more. <laughs> That's a lot. Maybe go a little less. 
Now it really lets me grind it. Woo, I can smell the chilies. So this is looking fabulous. So see how it is now? Now I'm going to add standard white vinegar. And I like vinegar. I like the zest. So I'm going to be pretty generous. That's a lot of zing and zang right there. And now our next ingredient for our chili pepper water is water. Wow. Ooh. That's good. This is not only used for akubone, but you can use it for fried fish. You use it for lao lao. You use it for stews. It's just a, a classic Hawaii condiment. Okay, so we're just gonna have rice, eggs, and aku for breakfast, but cannot not have veggies. So this is Malabar spinach. I think it's a spinach of Egypt, but it sure grows great in Hawaii. Whoopah! Can't believe Buddy's still sleeping. We're gonna eat it with just some good old white rice. I'll take two, two pieces. There we go. Last but not least, now you hit it with the chili pepper water. So how do you eat akubon? One might ask. Let me show you. Any way you want to, cause that meat is just gonna come right at the bones. Mmm. Oh my god. Mmm. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. -mm -mm. Holy moly. Come here, honey. Are you ready to just mm. roll over and die with oh. ecstasy? Fresh alcohol. Isn't it mm. freaking like irreplaceable? Wow. That's really special. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Thanks, Ryan. Wow. Thank you, neighbor Ryan. Oh, I can't wait for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> and for lunch, we're going to make tuna sandwiches. But it's going to be with smoked tuna, smoked aku. I'm just going to cut the end pieces. So this is what we're going to have for lunch. So I'm going to just go generous with some garlic salt. Then here too, some lemon pepper. I'm also going to go generous with olive oil. We're going for a really good Spanish olive oil. And I'll hit the head with some too. I'm just going to toss it a bit. I just feel like when you put oil to it, like it just seals, seals the meat and it seals in all the moisture and flavor. Now we're just going to pop these in the Traeger. It's on smoke at about 165. Shouldn't take more than a couple hours. Baby food. Here, can go with your color green. You wanna try? Try. Hi, baby. How you like that fish? Let's get this nice and smoky. Right, good night. Hi. Are you learning to crawl? What a nightmare. <laughs> Hey, buddy, that's my headphones. Buddy is gone producer on us. He's always be falling asleep on the job, man. Alrighty, our fish was smoking for about an hour and a half and then I just cranked it up like five minutes ago, just because. And it looks beautiful. And you can see how it's cutting a red color from being smoked. The longer you smoke it, the more red it would get but Justin's hungry. So, ooh, nice juicy fish head. It looks beautiful. I cranked the grill up just so I can um, toast some bread. Look, Justin, I got us some super hippie bread. It's like made out of sunflower seeds. Let's see if it works. Bring these one at a time to the table. Smoky goodness, are you ready for it? Mm -hmm. All in one. Mm. Oh. How does it taste? Because we got tastier ingredients before you cook with them, right? Oh, it's totally just melting your mouth. Look at this. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Wow. Let's Can see. I take my bite? Go for it. Incredible ingredient. Holy moly. 
So here's a beautiful piece of fish dripping with olive oil, falling apart actually. And I wanna just pour in that olive oil that has all the fish flavor in it. Let's also scrape some meat from the head and the collars. And this meat, oh, it's just so flavorful and so fatty. I mean, tuna is a lean, especially aku is a leaner fish. And now, we just want to chunk up this fish. And if you want, if you want your tuna fish super cold, then you can then take this and chill it and make yourself a really cold tuna fish. I'm just going to roll with it because we're hungry. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to add some red onion. I'm going to add celery for some extra, extra crunch. And the one thing I was just so sad that we didn't have is dill pickles. I'm adding some some canned or some jarred jalapenos because you know jalapenos are pickled. So look at that. That's looking lovely. This is the really important part. Like hands down, I probably won't make a tuna sandwich if I don't have these two things. Dill weed. If you don't have fresh, dried is fine. And citrus, lemon or lime. In this case, I'm using both because I have both. I'm gonna juice the lemon straight in there. I'm gonna put some lime in there go for it with the dill weed. And we'll give that a stir. If you're somebody who, you want this tuna sandwich, but you don't want mayo, just maybe add a little more really good olive oil and just put it on some bread and eat it. If you're like me, <laughs> I think you already know what the next step is. Mayonnaise. So it's a little sloshier because of all the lemon and lime juice, but that is perfect. And I'm not adding salt and pepper because we already put a good amount, a very generous amount of garlic salt and lemon pepper. Nice, wow. This hippie bread's holding up. Sweet. I kind of just wanna like dip the bread in this olive oil because it's just so good, yeah? These sides need some love, they need some some oil because they're just gonna get hit with fresh arugula. It's got a nice spicy bite. Next, we will do some sprouts. These are sunflower sprouts. Oh wow, and this is sunflower seed bread. We're having a sunflower sandwich. Isn't that cheery on a gray day? We just want both pieces of bread to feel that love, you know? You don't want one to be like dry cracker. And it's gonna have so much crunch because of the jalapenos, the onions, the celery. That looks lovely, don't it? And then you go, wah! like that. But now I'm going to cut into our sandwich. Mmm. Yum. Mmm. Hippie bread works. It's different. But I like it. This is like super healthy, delicious tuna sandwich. Hearty, <clears throat> seedy, crunchy goodness, smoky flavor. This is the most gourmet tuna fish sandwich that ever did live. I do believe it's true. The dill and the lime, they just um, next dimension kind of stuff. Okay, here you go, love. Mm. <laughs> oh, such a good combo with the heat of the um the meat and then the nice uh, fresh greens. Okay, cool. Well, we're gonna finish eating this, and then we'll see you back for dinner. <laughs> Sorry, of Kimmy's uh... life. Well, we decided to go on a little nature hike to burn off that wonderful lunch and didn't realize it was gonna rain on us. But at least we have a happy little wet baby. You like the rain? Good. Are you getting all wet? Let's go home and dry off and make dinner. Okay, so we're gonna have poke bowls for our dinner tonight with this beautiful fish. 
Hi, baby. Oh my gosh, you make him look so big. <laughs> he is big. <laughs> Not our dog, but a very good dog, and you just know exactly where to sit. <laughs> Kaya's like the best student. We have this beautiful block of aku meat. There's definitely a bloodline in it. We can trim some of that out. I don't mind it, but the fish stays fresh longer. And when you're sharing with others, which I am a lot of times, people don't like the bloodline. But besides me, I know who does. Kaya. Here you go, thank you. When someone gives us a fish, we we treat it the same way as we do a fish that we worked really hard to catch. And it just means that you really, you really have to honor it. You really wanna use it while it's fresh and you make the best of it. And so a lot of times when people give us a fish, I mean every time really, and we know that we need to put this beautiful fish first. For poke, all that really means is to cube up your fish. And so for this recipe, we're doing large cubes. This is not just an appetizer, this is dinner, and we're going big. This is a piece of peeled ginger. I really like to use the mortar and pesto just because it really releases so much more flavor than just cutting something does. That's ginger juice, but we're gonna just put all of it in there. I'm going to put soy sauce. So I can easily remove this ginger, but right now I just want it to kind of soak in there and really flavor that show you. Next, I am going to put a little bit of organic sugar because I want it to be balanced with the sweetness. If you don't want too much sesame oil, you can always stretch it with peanut oil or grapeseed oil or whatever oil you want. But I do like, to, I think it's important to add a nice oil to it because look at that. Look at that sheen, look at that. That's what you want coating your fish. My friend Megan made this bomb chili oil. And that is why I didn't put a chili pepper in there because she packs the heat in this. Oh my gosh, okay, I just tasted that sauce and it is excellent. So now, now I'm gonna remove this ginger because I believe it has served its purpose in life. This is a lot of poke. I am going to add some beautiful raw white onion. If you like sweet onions or Maui onions, red onions, go for it. Hey. Quiet on set. I'm gonna throw a cucumber at you. Here it comes. And that is the next ingredient. Cucumber, very strange maybe to put in a poke, but when Justin and I eat poke bowls, we kind of like them to be like salads. That's why we picked all the arugula too. Green onions, voila. You only wanna do this if you're gonna eat it right away. We have friends we're gonna share with right away, so that's why this bowl is so big. And we're gonna go ahead and put this in. Okay, give this a nice stir. Give it a nice pour. Okay, does this look scrumptious? Looks really good. Deliumptious. Right? Look at that. And just top it with some avocado. You don't really have to mix the avocado in. The last ingredient to this beautiful bowl of poke is gonna be sesame seeds. And you you can mix that in. It doesn't have to just be a topper. That's why I'm going so heavy. Poke bowl is basically hot rice white rice, whatever rice, this is red and brown rice. And then you wanna scoop your poke right on top of it and you wanna get saucy, right? Cause you want your rice to absorb that sauce. And that is dinner. Mmm, mmm. Yum. And the sauce goes good on it all, but now I need a bite with some hot rice in there. Mm. And then. Yeah, and that's why there's no avocado left in the poke. Mm. 
Mahalo so much for joining us for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I hope you enjoyed them all. And for those of you who may have noticed, during dinner, we were enjoying Juneshine. Juneshine is a hard kombucha company started by some friends of mine and they started it because they were so into clean organic eating and they realized that there really wasn't anything clean or organic happening in the alcohol industry. So what they did, oh my gosh, look. It's not my dog just showed up. He just came. Like he just Hi! What timing you have. What they did is they just challenged themselves to only use organic, ethically sourced, top quality ingredients to make hard kombucha. And when I say hard kombucha, it's not like a mixer where you put in hard alcohol. It is just fermented naturally and it is delicious. And my friends at Juneshine would like to share some with you. So if you just leave a comment below and you make sure you're subscribed, you might win a 24 count case of samples of Juneshine. It's a case of Juneshine, a like variety pack. Um, but in order to win for this one, you must be 21 years or older and they only deliver into the United States for now. So good luck and cheers. We'll see you back next week.